Hi, uh, it's Phil from PT Precision Automotive. Got a Mazda CX-5 here, it's a 2016 model diesel. It's got a very, very strange issue. This is for uh, Nathan from Brookvale Mazda too, you want a video? <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't want a video, but anyway. So, what it's doing is going into limp home mode. Um, over 100 kilometers an hour. Uh, the engine light's coming on and then the engine's shutting down. Still running, but shutting down the power. What we're seeing on the scan tool is the oil pressure is going excessively high. Um, now, there's, it's a very complicated type of oil setup with small galleries in it. They've got common issues with the um, vacuum pump on them breaking up and then stuff going through the oil galleries and blocking it up. Uh, there's a variable valve on the back of the oil pump on the back of the block. We've pulled that out and the sleeve that goes into the block to the pump. That was all sort of a bit cruddy and dirty. Uh, we've cleaned that out, but then we've also, just for safety, we've replaced that valve. And we also replaced the oil pressure switch. Um, the oil pressure switch is a pretty technical sort of switch. It's not just for pressure, it, it reads to the ECU and that. Um, and we, we just put that in as well because we thought it might be faulty. It's a quick, easy part to replace. So it still has the same issue. So it's gonna get more involved. I have put my, my pressure gauge on it to see it. We can't really seal it really well. It's a very difficult one to get into, but start up cold, it's on 60 PSI, um, which I think is fine. It drops down to sort of 40 and then hot when it's hot, it's about 35, which is a little bit higher than normal. It should be between 20 and 30 PSI. Um, but if I give it a flick when it's cold, you can see the needle, you have to be really quick to see it, but you see the needle will bury around to the 100 PSI plus, right? So there is an issue here with it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run, because um, it had an oil and filter change uh, three odd thousand Ks ago. I'm gonna run two cans of the, um, the BG EPR in it. And I'm gonna run that for, I don't know, half an hour or so. And um, then I'm gonna, I'm going to be pulling pulling that oil out and then I'm going to be pulling the engine sump off. I'm going to see if I can get to the oil pressure relief valve on the um, on the oil pump. So I'll video that when we get it off so if we can get to it because there's something there's something not right with this one. But um, anyway, we'll see. Okay, um, so this has been running for 45 minutes here yeah, on the two cans of EPR. The oil pressure when I started was around the 50 60 psi. It's now down about 28 psi at idle, which is within spec. You know, it's been 20 to 30 at idle, but it's actually making it better. I'm not going to run it much longer. I'm going to turn it off now and pull the sump off. But I think, you know, we could go and we could just dump it and, and, um, put oil in it, new filter in it, it might well be right, but I think we've gone this far, we're going to commit to pulling the fucking sump off anyway and pulling it apart, but I think this EPR may well have sorted this out, so it goes to show that that EPR, we actually put it in each engine before it's service, just to clean the, the little oil galleries and stuff, because they're very tight tolerance as well, so we put it in the petrol, this is diesel, I think the petrol we put it in as well, but you know, this has not had it, you know. The guy's a little bit tight on spending money, doesn't like to spend too much money, but anyway, it's only got 90,000 Ks on this thing as well, so we'll continue on here, pull the sump off. Ah, uh, so we got the sump off. That is fucked. That's worse. Um, there's so much, I mean, you can see it. All these rough particles, that's all, that's all hard carbon shit in there. Look at it. That's there, it's everywhere. Yeah. It's all, it's like hard carbon. But more interesting so is the uh, fucking pickup. Look at it up in there. It's just full of shit in here. Oh, 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 oh. There's chunks, look, there's just chunks falling out. Look at this. Hard chunk. That's hard, that's hard carbon. That's. It's fucking finished, mate. I don't know. 
You're not going to win this battle. Diesel. Well, <clears throat> that's all full in the strainer. That should, that should produce low oil pressure, not high oil pressure. But if that carbon's going in there and then it's blocking up, the relief valve, this is a same sort of design as the Captiva bloody balance shaft, take vibrations out of the engine, out of the diesel engine. Oh, to do this oil pump, you're going to be pulling the whole front end off. Because there's no section you can un just unbolt, yeah? So he's in a fair bit of trouble here, or he's going to have to make a decision of which way we go. I'll just strip the whole front down and take this pump and balance shaft apart. I've done it on Captivas. They're a pain in the ass, they really are. And it, it'd be a thousand plus for that if you can buy it. I don't know. I've got a little in the, the Captiva. <sighs> Can't get this strainer off. It's in behind. There's another bolt in between. So you've got to separate this whole. To separate it all. That's a shame. Or I'll punch that out and. Oh, no, I can't punch that out. Not if you want to put it back together. Oh, yeah, there's a lid on that. Uh, no. It's, no. It's joined together. Mate, more oil changes, engine flush. That would help this a lot. 90,000 Ks, carbon builder. Diesel, mate, diesel. All right. Short trips. Okay, so what we've done is just clean it up as best as we can. Uh, the custom came down and had a look. No, it's pretty stuffed. It's, it's no matter what we do, I mean, this, we can't get this strainer off. We have cleaned that out with some of you, some carby cleaner and stuff. You can't actually see through there now. We can't get that apart, can't get it off. You've got to actually pull that whole oil pump and balance shaft off the whole car, which means I have to strip that whole front end down to be timed and balanced with the motor. So, no matter what we do, if we, if we just pulled that off and cleaned it up, that's all fine, well and good, but there's still gonna be that carbon, that hard crusty carbon around, so um, it's sort of at an end. I mean, that's it there, like that's 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 a hard piece. I can't even, yeah, there you go. Oh, and that's what it is, it's just, and that little fragments are going into everything, right? So I have pulled out the pressure relief valve there's another pressure relief valve for high pressure on this one here. There's another one in the pump which I can't get to. So I've done my best. The guy came down and had a look at it last night. And he was the same way. We were going to do a dynamic, a BG dynamic treatment through it. But you know, it's expensive to do that as well. And this is this is carbon. We're gonna this is diesel, so it's a bit stronger than um, petrol powered ones. So He's made the decision, we done what we've done, clean it up, we'll clean the rest of it up and put it back together and then we're going to put oil in it and new oil filter, genuine filter and um, we've got, still got the oil pressure switch on it, on the, the gauge on it, so we'll monitor that, see what that does and if it's better, it's better and he'll drive it for a couple of weeks and see what happens and then he said if it's all going okay, he, he'll come back and he'll do the BG uh, dynamic um, engine flush, which I think can only help it all. You know, soften that car hard carbon down so it'll actually pass through some of these things but there's so many small little oil galleries and little um, valves that have got to move it doesn't take much to jam them up yeah so anyway this basically servicing more often this is obviously might have some other issues with compression going through the rings or uh, diesel injector seat leaking carbon into the engine uh, and then that's causing this carbon build up inside. So he bought it second hand. The servicing history wasn't real great on it. His servicing isn't great on it either, but think the thing is here, diesel cars, fuck, put an engine flush in it before you do an oil change, yeah, just to help this from stop happening, yeah. Right. Just on a interesting fact, because of all this stuff, I thought, like, you know what, I'll just, I'll cut the oil filter open. I'll just have a look at the oil filter. 
all those little black dots on those lumps, can you see them in there? That's what we're dealing with. Now this, you can hear it. Hear it? It's all crunchy and all that. It's like cutting paste, yeah? Got all these speckles in it. Look at it. It's too much car it's too much blow going through this engine. It's all we're up against. It's fuck. Three, two, one. So this is just about operating temperature. It's just wild man. So it's got good oil pressure 30. That's yeah, fine. It's really fine. Yeah, it's really fine. As, as far as looking for carbon, where do you start? You know, that's not blowing that lid off. Starting to look for the cores, mate, you'd, you'd really, you'd be pulling those injectors out first, seeing what the seats are like, and then you, you go back with pistons, go and buy pistons, but if that blow-by was bad, there's nothing really bad there. You know, it's just a, it's another adventure to start into, but that, this is it, yeah, it's going to go. Good steady oil pressure, so that's all we can do, yeah. So, yeah. Right.